Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. So I wanted to do um, some ladder grinding today. Had a couple days off here, but we're gonna be jumping back in here with a mono white humans deck. And if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you guys. And then the deck list will be in the description, both under moxfield.com and untap.gg. And there will also be a list of other playlists of mine. So if you want to see other, my other videos that I have, you can check those out there as well. Um, I also want to big, give a really big thank you here to my members. So um, at all levels, uh, whether you're um, just looking at getting access to the early content for as little as $1.99 a month, or if you're supporting at a higher level, I really wanna thank you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you and you help make this channel possible. So if you wanna become a member and get early access, here's exactly how you do so. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, jumping back into the deck. So I haven't made any changes here since the last time I played the deck. It's been a couple days. But I'm curious to see how it's kind of going to perform on ladder. Um, the more recent changes within the last week or so that I'd made was bringing in uh, three copies of Ossification, which I really like, just kind of giving the deck a couple more hard answers against sort of everything that's out there. Um, well, admittedly, this doesn't target enchantments, it is still really good at dealing with planeswalkers and creatures. And then we do also have a full playset of March of Otherworldly Light to hit enchantments. So between four copies of March, three copies of Ossification, and four copies of Brutal Cathar, plus three copies of Iganjo, we have a decent amount of removal. And so I'm really excited to see kind of how this turns out. We have a pretty lean one drop list. Um, we have the full playset of Lunark Veteran and full playset of Re Recruitment Officer which I think are just too valuable to shave any copies of. And then I have the Singleton Skrelv, which I think is just sort of a nice addition, gives us another sort of angle to be attacking on, and it also really helps out our full play set of Brutal Cathars. And then for our two-drop slot, we have a full play set of Intrepid Adversary for the life gain and the pump, um, full play set here of Copper Coat Vanguard, which pumps the whole deck, and then two copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. I think if I had more room, I could certainly see running three copies of this, but everything just kind of got shaved down. And I don't think I really want to go under two copies here as this is a really nice effect. Even though we have a decent amount of uh, spells in the deck, I think it just it hurts other decks more than, than this deck. So two feels right for now. Um, for the three drop and greater slot, we've got the full playset here of Brutal Cathar for the removal, full playset of Adeline, which is just an incredible value card. And then um, I did kind of a split here where I have three copies of Night Errant of Eos, which had been at the full playset. And while this card is absolutely fantastic, I'm trying out shaving this down to three copies since we don't have any um, like multiple creature um, effects. Like it, we're not running like Resolute Reinforcements. We're not running, um, you know, some of the other cards that, like a lot, of, we only have nine one drops. So I'm bringing this down to three copies. And then with the fourth, I'm sort of splitting that off into one copy of Sanguine Evangelist, which I've been really happy with so far. So the deck runs 22 land, uh, full play set here of Cavern of Souls, and then three copies of Iganjo, just to make sure we have 15 basics for these ossifications. So, you know, with this list, with the changes with ossification, we're not running Mishra's Foundry anymore. We're not running the uh, Murex copies that we had been in previous versions, just to make sure we have enough basics. But I think this is a nice change. Ossification is really powerful. So I'm hopeful that this will be pretty good here. 
Um, again, it's been a couple days since, since I've been climbing on ladder. I think we're at somewhere around platinum tier one. So let's go ahead and jump in to a couple games. And then at the end, we'll have a look kind of at the uh, the stats, the overall stats, win ratio, and sort of how the deck is performing. But yeah, really excited. I, you know, I always love running Mono White Humans. I think it's like one of just like the strongest core decks. And I think it's it's been good for so long. Um, Wizards really seems to give like a lot of support for this type deck. So we'll see how it goes. I know I had a request to see, you know, what kind of decks are going to survive rotation. Um, and I haven't had a chance to sort of look at, at it a little bit, but um, I'll see if I can maybe maybe address that in a future video. Okay, so yeah, two lands here, super happy. This hand looks great. Up against Mono Red. Lunark Veteran is just a really great um, one drop here to have. And I do think I still want to run the Veteran out over the Skrelve. Um, just for that life gain. Just so important. They can get scrubbed down either next turn or the turn after. Okay, we've got Ruckus. Looks like they don't have a one drop, so... So I'm not sure. We could look at going Scrub plus Officer this turn, and I think that would be fine. Um... The other option here is going Thalia, just because that'll kind of, you know, it'll slow down their Ruckus, it'll really tax their mana quite a bit. Um, so I kind of like the Thalia play. And they won't be able to kill it this turn also, which is kind of nice. So I guess what we're, do, we're gonna do here is let's shove in first, just in case they're holding the, the play with fire. So we can get that point of damage in before playing the Thalia. And even if they take a turn to kill this, I think it's just good kind of taxing their mana. Um, maybe overrunning out like the Skrull and the, and the Officer that turn. Yeah, see now they can play Godric, but they can't play the, the Ruckus on it. Which is super important because now we get to go ahead and use Ossification, take out the Godric. Uh, we could also go Skrelv plus Vanguard here. It's actually a decent... Because then we can push with Veteran. Um, hmm. Yeah. I guess I kind of like that. I mean... Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of unsure what I want to do. Because I guess like we can push for two here. If we play Copper Coat, we can push for a little bit more. I think I'm just going to go go that direction, honestly. This makes it a little harder to kill Thalia. And now if they want to trade Kumano with Veteran, they can do so. We're at 18, so I feel pretty good about that. And we've still got Ossification in case they just um, sort of do something crazy here. Yeah, and if they want to spend a turn taking out the Thalia, that's okay. They are going to push a little bit of damage here, unfortunately, because now they've got access to Demonic Ruckus. So I'm not sure if we make this trade. We lose a little bit of damage on the ground, but I think getting rid of this Kumano is probably worth it. So yeah, I think we do want to make this trade. Keep our life total as high as possible. And now we can sort of play out our hand here. Um, use Ossification on the Godric so we don't give them the extra card draw.
and then I guess just hope they don't have um, like end the festivities that'd be pretty awkward but yeah definitely leaving Skrelv up in case they've got removal for our veteran So they're pushing for we drop to eight. Do we want to trade officer for Feldon? Um, I mean, they could blow us out here if they have like monstrous rage, which is entirely possible. I don't love giving them a card either. So we drop to eight, we push back for five, they drop to eight. Really depends on what we draw. I think we. I think we just try to race here, honestly. Hopefully, like, we hit, like, a creature that we can get a little bit of life going. Yeah, it looks like they had the Monstrous Rage, and now they're just going to pump. Yeah, and this is, you know, definitely some extra damage here, but really happy that we didn't give them an extra card and lose our creature to all of that. And Knight Errant is just a perfect pickup. And I think since they're just top decking here, happy to tap the Skrelv to help Convoke. I'm trying to think if we should push with one officer. So I don't, I guess we'll, let's, um, Let's see, let's tap Skrelv plus uh, Veteran. Yeah, I guess we probably want to tap all of it. Just this way in case we pick up something like um, Brutal Cathar, we'll have access to it, and that's nice. Okay, Adeline's pretty sweet. Um, I think we've got to pick up Adversary just for the lifelink. Yeah, let's go for Brutal Cathar plus Adeline, or plus uh, Adversary here. Adeline is great, but I think we just don't have time for it. Let's get the Feldon out of there. It looks like they picked up either Play With Fire or Lightning Strike for the Brutal Cathar. Alright, so now that we're down to six... Yeah, I'm surprised they're not attacking with Feldon. I would have expected an attack there. Can push 11 this turn. I think we just need to get adversary down. Actually, wait, hang on. This if we pump, I think we might have enough here. Yeah, 5 8 11 3. Okay, they're dead. That works. Nice, close one. See if we can get into diamond. Uh, opening hand looks good. We've got access to march on one into like copper coat, potentially knight errant. Looks like we're up against world souls rage. Either a teamer or potentially four color. And then I guess since we've got Brutal Cathar, we could consider using March just to get rid of this blocker. Depends on, I guess, if they make it a 1-4. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, they're going for the ill-timed. So maybe we don't need March right now. Maybe we just hang on to it. Definitely want to use it on Nissa. And I think we want to make sure to use March here instead of Rubicathar since they've got potentially ill-timed explosion on four. I guess let's offer the trade first if they go for it. I, I highly doubt they will go for it. Could also play like copper coat here and then like pitch two cards. I think we probably just want to pitch one card though. And since they've got ill-timed explosion, um, I think we probably pitch Brutal Cathar here, honestly. Save the other march. Okay, so now they've got Nyssa. And we can respond to the trigger here, which is super important. I think we definitely go for it. Um, I guess we can try to like refill with Knight Errant. So maybe we pitch both Adversary and Copper Coat. And then like maybe if we hit a land or something like that. Okay, so yeah. Now we can maybe pick up some one drops, try to get back into this. Kind of unfortunate we had to pitch a bunch of cards there, but I think it's super necessary. These Nissas are incredibly dangerous. Okay, and that's a nice pickup. So they go in front of their board wipe here. Yeah, this is definitely a rough matchup. I mean, no getting around it. But I think just like you gotta respect the the Nissas because they just if they can go off, it's just super problematic.
Okay, now he's got access to virtue. So he's probably gonna go for dig for a world soul's rage at this point. Yeah, and unfortunately we can't target the virtue here with our ossification. We found Anissa. Oh man. Whew. I guess the question is, does he have the uh, World Soul's Rage to go with it? Yeah, this might just be it right here. Guess, did he find it? Yeah, I guess he was short two points. So you must have like a second one in hand or some way of getting it back. Guess we'll force him to have it, but... Yeah, it looks like he's got the rage. And that'll do it, unfortunately. It's definitely a tough match. Comes down to Vanessa if they can stick Vanessa. And obviously, like, they can do a bunch of nonsense with, like, the the Falaji, um, whatchamacallit, to get the stuff back, and then the Virtues, and all the other stuff. But I think Nyssa, the Nyssa is the most dangerous card in that deck, just because it pulls everything else together. And you really do want to have Exile effects for it. Especially since we can't attack the Graveyard directly. Yeah, if they want to march right away, that's totally fine. Here, I think even though we've got access to three mana, I just want to get adversary going. Um, 
just for the damage output. And that's a nice pickup. Now, even if they've got lockdown, we've got Adeline on the board. It's also a nice pickup. Here, I think we just have to respect the possibility of them having counter spells, and so only run one of the copper coats out, especially since they could also have like depopulate next turn so we'll just start with one I guess on the other hand like if they counter this second copper coat they won't be able to use removal on Adeline so might be worth it just to try to push here yeah I guess I'm gonna go for it again like if they've got depopulated super awkward but like we have like a turn before they are into like sunfall range so I think trying to push makes sense. Yeah, nice. Just gonna be a little bit too much pressure. All right, just a little bit of a quick one here today. Wanted to get a couple games in. Um, let's take a look at the stats. And I think that some of the games are still pending. It hasn't quite uploaded um, all of them here, but Currently showing 80% win rate, so really happy with this. 12 wins and three losses uh, with this uh, this version of the deck. So yeah, really happy here. It's doing great here against Mono Red, four and two, so 67%. 100% against Boros, Mono Blue, um, Mono White, Esper, and Rakdos, and then one loss here against World Souls Rage. So really happy with the deck. Highly recommend checking it out. Again, description is going to have the deck list. And we will see you guys here in the next one. Thank you guys so much again. You guys are amazing. Mm -hmm.